David, 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 I want to ask you a question, and um, this is something that a lot of people don't have to deal with, but I remember Andre 3000 telling me that he remembered the time when Outkast got so big that he started seeing less black people. You know, I remember when every time you would come to Atlanta, he was oh, always white people. He, you would call me, and you would be like, uh, you're like, Banner. You know, I'm up here, I'm, I'm, I'm playing. Like, where you playing at, bro? Yeah, man, I'm in Buckhead Theater, man. Come. <laughs> and I came out, and it really showed me, bro, how much you've grown. Because, like, bro, you, what, play five shows while you were here in Atlanta? How many shows you played when you went to Atlanta? That... Probably two. Yeah, I know I, yeah, yeah. I know I went to one, but yeah, you yeah. had another one. And bro, I walked out when you brought me out on stage, bro. I was so proud of you, bro. It yeah. I hadn't seen you think you would have thought you were at the United Nations, bro. Yeah. You yeah. had people of all colors, man. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. Uh but I do play mostly in front of white people. Mm -hmm. Uh and I mean that's just music. I don't yeah. know, you know, but like Andre said, uh for me. In New Orleans, maybe D.C., New York, Atlanta, I get like a, a, a complete mixture of people mm -hmm. in certain places. And it's starting to grow, you know, uh, the Virginia area. But for me, I always talk to Charlie, but I'm like, it, it, the goal, for, I mean, one of the things, the challenges for me will be to cross over to my own people. That's what, that's what I'm trying to get to. How how does that feel, bro? I'm, I don't know because being here, I've always played in front of, a large group of white people, yeah. you know, it, 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 you know, I don't it's know. almost just the opposite for you. Yeah, like yeah. most people. Yeah, it happens the other way. Right. Like he said, as they got bigger, they started to see more people, more right. and more. So for me, it would be the opposite. opposite. Right. So I would have to cross over to my people. Not saying that they don't know who I am. Some mm -hmm. of them, little sprinkles here they might see. And it's all about, uh, but what's fun about the career is that a lot of them don't know. Because they haven't seen me on TV that much or they haven't seen me on the radio. But when they do get exposed to it, it's like a beautiful thing. It happened to me, bro. It it literally blew my mind. And to be honest with you, bro, I'm not an emotional cat. Mm -hmm. But, bro, I was... You are so humble about who you are. You know, and hi historically what you mean to music. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you are so trained um, when it comes to music... And that you've seen the things that you've seen, bro. Like, I, I saw your two, tour schedule. I remember, bro, looking at your tour schedule. You remember, I was going to come overseas. I remember you going to come hang go out with us. And I was going to tour with you all of the yeah, places yeah, yeah. that you've been. Bro, give us, give us like, some of the things that you've seen physically. Not while you were on stage, but just while you were traveling. Because me as an artist, that was one of the things that changed me the most. When, you know, going through Europe. I went from young, one side to Europe to the next, going to Australia, seeing these different types of cultures and to see that people know your music. There were people who didn't know how to speak English. No, no, but that's they knew right. But they knew my every word to my song. Like, yeah. How does that feel? That feels great, you know. Uh, like I've played, we average about 200, 250 shows a year and I've played in Japan, I've played in, in, in New Zealand. Yeah. And... You know, I think the power of music is just that universal to where people, even I see them mumbling the words, but I don't know if they know it, but they know the sound. Right. So they're making it. And it's just beautiful to go to Paris, France, and sell out and have all these people really excited. It's a wonderful thing. And, and that's what I love most, being able to play in front uh, in such of a uh, diverse group, a uh, diverse audience all mm -hmm. over the world and just see them being really excited. Mm -hmm. And me playing a trumpet, I mean, most people don't even know what that is, mm -hmm. you know. So for me to be able to be in a position to be able to headline shows and work with, with some of the biggest artists in the world as myself, mm -hmm. not as a, a background person, a uh, horn section person, whatever, which I do that too when, when they need me to. But it, just to be, Axed by Prince and to come play in, at the Essence Festival and things like that. That's just a beautiful thing for me. It's a dream come true, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. But to play all over the world is 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 an unbelievable thing. And sometimes for me, I don't know if people know, but hold on, wait, wait. Did you just say you? What you say about Prince? <laughs> oh, that's why, yeah, that's how he be stunting on me right there. That's what I'm talking about. There, he just slid in there. Yeah, you know, just you know, this Prince. 
No, no, no man. Rogers like, Nelson. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know Prince. I work with him. Uh, may you rest in peace. Uh, I work with him. And then he got the call for the Essence Festival, and he wanted to make sure that I was going to be here because he knew that I was from here, and he wanted to bring me out on stage. And we rehearsed that Mardi Gras world, and it was such a beautiful thing. I was able to work with him off and on for a couple of years, yeah. and and that's what I'm saying. So to to be called by people like that is beyond my wildest dreams. Like, I, cause I'm just playing, you know. I I love music. I respect music, and I I respect everybody that make music. And and just to be called into different genres and different arenas is all fun to me. Mm-hmm. So when I'm traveling around the world, sometimes I like to go to the hood parts of the uh, mm-hmm. of the places that might not be as glamorous because I like to. Even if I can't speak to the few, I just walk around the neighborhood. It might be dangerous or not, but I don't. I don't really, you know. I'm from New Orleans, so, but I just got to feel that energy of 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 the people that's that's being creative and and using the the neighborhood the best they can. So traveling, and most times, to be honest with you, I don't really get a chance unless we got two days to where we plan two shows. The day before, the day before we fly in or we drive in on a bus. We set up, we do the stuff, and then the next day we don't have to be there until it's time to play. And that's normally when I get a chance to try, I mean, to go around before my show and go eat at some of the local restaurants and places that's off the internet that people don't know. I like to get into those places, but by me traveling so much, I don't really get to see where I'm at. Yeah. You know, so I'll wake up on the bus, grab something to eat, and catering, I'll go find a restaurant close to the venue come back, it's time for sound check, mm-hmm. then we eat dinner, and then it's time for the show, and we back on the bus at 2, 3 in the morning, wake up in another city. This is every night, mm-hmm. you know. So for me, it's always been a, a goal of mine to go back to some of the places that I've traveled many times, 10, 12 times, but I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. I've only seen the state. To go back just to walk around and without my instrument and just be a tourist in some of those places. All right. So... We about to start rounding it out. This is this is gonna sound like a strange question, but answer it. Um, as much success as you've been able to garner, uh, what's with you and your wife, Beatus, bro? Explain <laughs> that to us, man. <laughs> <laughs> and those who know Trump on show, they know why I'm asking that. Well, actually, uh, the first time I think the reason why I had the t-shirt on and I was playing and I felt my when I blow, my body expands a little bit, uh-huh. and I was getting hot. But I, I don't sweat on stage like it's, it's really. And I just took it off, and plus I was doing a couple of push-ups, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I went with Lenny, mm-hmm. and he's all into fashion and stuff. I already was wearing the t-shirt, uh, wife beaters and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he had gave me some really nice ones, and he was like, "Okay, well we gonna just make sure you good on that." Mm-hmm. And it's, it always felt free for me when I'm playing, right. you know, when I'm swinging my arms and I'm playing. But that's that's all it was. That's crazy that you had. It's a technical reason why. Yeah. I mean, it felt, head, right. it, it felt like that to me, mm-hmm. you know. So I was wearing my T-shirts and it just felt like this area right here was just getting a little, mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't be free. So I, I just liked the feeling of that. And some of it is just playing here a lot. In the summer, it's too hot anyway. But that's funny because I show you how we assume, and it's great to ask that. I was like, well, a lot of times when when we become successful, we find ways to keep ourselves grounded. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought she was gonna say, you know, we get popping, but we want to just keep it in the hood because you stay like the. To me, that's what I always think of. That's almost like the logo to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was always proud of that to see you in these big venues with all these beautiful people, gold chandeliers, and my homie step out there in the white <laughs> beater and kill him. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. man, you know. I, I can go on stage with some sweats. It don't really matter. The music is the most important right. thing. But I, you know, when I when I wear my wife beaters, mm-hmm. it, that is a crazy question. But I didn't put that much. Though. I could I couldn't do it at the White House, of course. But everywhere else, but you probably wanted to. Though. I wanted to because I, I was in my. You know, I got to get in my 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 vibe. You know, but that's just that. You know, right. it feels free when I'm directing the band and and playing a little bit. And that's just what it is. You know, I go to Walmart and get the little cheap ones and, you know. I had two more questions for you, bro. Um, The thing that I want to know from you, bro, is 
is it religion? Is it the way that you were raised? Is it life? What keeps you grounded spiritually, bro? Like, ever since I've known you, bro, that, there's a... We were talking about you and KLC from Beast by the Pound. Yeah, yeah. There is a a wisdom and a calmness about you, bro, and you're a good person. You also remind me a lot of Dave Chappelle. All like, right. as big as Dave is, he takes care of everybody that's around him. There, There is a love and an admiration, bro. As busy as you are, you always find time. I see the people who drop by the studio um, while I was here, you give them your last, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'll see when we walk across the street, you know, to 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 the restaurant. You always trying to give, bro. Tommy, Tommy Nova, man, you, man, we are gonna make sure we gotta give you some music for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What keeps you grounded spiritually? What, where did that come I, from? I, you know, I think it comes from my mom. It is spiritual. Um, it, it's just my mom is like that. My dad is like that, and and. And as far as no matter how big we get, I was always taught, uh, it's a trombone. It don't matter how well you can play and how famous you get. If you're not a professional people's person, then it's all irrelevant anyway. Right. And so that always stuck in me. But that was always something that, um, that type of action that you just explained, that's just, I never thought about that because that's just me. Right. And I've, I've, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm, talking to Obama or the trash guy that picks up my trash in the truck is all equal to me. Like, we all, I respect people, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel as though we all have a job. Wow. So I don't, I don't separate myself from a waiter or anybody like that. We all have a job to where we have to, and for, in order for the world to work, we have to work together. Right. It's a, a collaboration. So for me, when I'm off, even if I go on stage and there's 20,000 people, when I'm off stage, like I'm right back with my boys and we going to uh, the gas station to get some chicken and all that. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I don't never separate myself because music and these horns are most important. It's not about fame. It's not about money. And... That's 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 the way I was raised, and that's that's what's real to me, you know. Like I'm I'm no different than nobody else, and I I don't want to be separated like some you know whatever because all that's fake anyway. We all people. My my last question to you, bro. If there was a young trombone shorty, whether he's in New Orleans, whether he's in New York, whether he's in New Zealand, what advice would you give him from a man perspective? Or just being a human, because there there may be a female trombone. Yeah, story. yeah, we yeah. I just want to say just to men, um, what advice would you give them when stuff isn't going so well, but they're in the music? You know, I, I, the advice I would tell them first is to make sure that you keep an open mind to all styles of music, because sometimes in certain music, some people develop some... Uh, they don't really respect it because it might not be as complicated as the stuff that they can play, but that doesn't matter. So I think the most important thing I would tell them is to keep an open mind because as a horn player, as a musician, you never know which type of situation you're gonna be in before you're able to go on your own. So you have to be open-minded to be able to learn and play and respect everybody's music, no matter if it's if it's ABC to you or if it's complicated music, whatever it may be. But the most important thing I would say is not to give up. You know, find your passion, and if you can deal with that passion and playing the horn or being a musician is that, it's gonna get tough, you know? I happen to be in a very blessed situation because I started so early. And if I did go through any down parts, I wasn't I wasn't aware of it because I was so young. I still had my mom and my dad and stuff like that. It probably been moments where we didn't play for a long time when we were kids, but I, I wasn't looking at it like that because we also played in my backyard and we second line with the kids in the neighborhood. So even though we wasn't getting paid, music was always important. You wanna know something that's crazy about what you said? I've been trying to do that with actors. Like everybody spends so much time trying to audition for somebody else to see them. Right. Why don't we just get together, pull out the cameras, and act? And act. That's some it. of that stuff we could put on YouTube. Right. Some of it we never may be able to use. But if we stay in the perpetual state of creating, right. which I think is the greatest aspect of what God gives us, 
God is a creator. That's it. Everything that you see, God has created. Um, the fact that that women can can and together we can have or create a child, create life. That's right. You have just shown me that if we stay in a perpetual state of creating, then you really wouldn't have the down times anyway. That's it. Because you are doing the greatest thing that any human being can do. That's it. It's create. You figured it out. That's yeah. it. So, like I said, when we here, like I'll get my band together, even if we off for two weeks uh, pre-COVID, and we'll just come in and jam. We might turn the microphones on and have a vibe, but we just play for each other. Like I've performed in here with my band to where we ran our whole show, and I felt just as good with nobody here than I do when I'm on the stage because we just got to release this energy, you know? So, but for the youngsters with the advice, I would just tell them, you know, like, now, we probably had hard times because when we're not working, you might not be getting paid, but that's not why we do it. And when you can be real with yourself and understand that getting paid or not, I'm still going to create music. I think the people and the world and the universe can feel that that genuine passion, and that's what takes you to another level. Okay. Anything you want to close out with? Anything you want to... You know, let them know that you're a part of. Well, I mean, well, I'm a part of this situation uh, with you, and I just want to let you know. I know you always be like, man, let me put a few dollars in your pocket. I just want to let you know, just to be able to, you coming here, me being in Atlanta, wherever it may be, and working with you, I've already been paid, mm -hmm. you know, it not not monetarily, but I've already been paid because I look up to you, mm -hmm. and I remember being a youngster and seeing you on TV and, and doing your rap thing, and I, to me, I was like, man, I got to work with these type of people. Like, it's always been a dream for me to work with Fresh and KL and you and Juve and all these type of people. I, would, I didn't know how it was going to happen because I didn't even know if y'all even knew what, what horns and mm -hmm. trombones and all that was. But So I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to work with you on mm -hmm. all capacity as a friend. And I'm already paid just, yeah. just being here with you, making but, some music. But music. let me tell you this, though. Um, I believe in us taking care of us. One time I spoke to a group of lawyers and black lawyers and when I when I when I started my speech I told them I have failed you. And they said, "Huh? You don't do nothing but fight for black people." Right. I said the fact that we have to send our children to other groups of people to work means that we fail them. Mm -hmm. If I want to talk to black people about us spending with us when I have it to pay, it is my duty to pay you. Mm -hmm. Even if it's for selfish reason. Bro, just think about, we come here, bro. Uh, I'm recording this song. Hey, dude, if we were anywhere else, we would have had to pay for studio time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know absolutely, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, um, if I would have went to somebody else, I would have had to pay them to play trombone and trumpet. So in this situation, the fact that we have, like, even though we working right now, yeah, yeah, we and we ain't signed the contract. Right, right. Yeah, and still, bro, I have to give to you. And even the fact that I come in and I drink your water, it's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finance, what people don't understand is they call money currency because it's like water. Right. And if we allow it to go around this room mm -hmm. and to continue to grow, then we can help each other, bro. And there may come a time, you know, Hope that it never does. Shoot, bro, if if we pay forward, I may need ten or twelve of them dollars back <laughs> one day. You know. Well, listen, well, that's what I'm telling. Remember, you called me a while ago and you wanted to do whatever you was trying to do, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm like, you go ahead and do it, and then call me, mm -hmm. and we'll work it out. Yeah. But and I, that's why I'm back now. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, that yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that. Um, even though I got this studio and we were recording, you mm -hmm. would have had to pay this and that. Mm -hmm. The win for me is going to be it coming to life. Yeah. That's the payment for me. And if some finances or monetary things come, that's fine. But I would probably tell you, donate it to the foundation mm -hmm. so we can help the next generation or whatever. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I I'm do. I'm going to tell you how, how again, just show you the serendipity in everything that we do. You and I argued yesterday about, I said, well, if, if, if it's like that, then... I want to make sure that I, I buy you lunch. Right, right. And I said, buy whatever exotic you want. Right, right. Then he waited for a while. Then he was like, hey, Banner, what you want to eat? He tried to put it back <laughs> on. We went back and forth. Then when I went to pay, just to show you how good you all are, 
the, the, the person who owned the restaurant knew that it was for you, and he wouldn't let me pay. <laughs> so then I took the money, and I gave big tips to yeah. everybody that was working in yeah, the yeah. restaurant. We ha- the fact, I'm going to tell you how much we've grown as men. I, I know that, that you know we're old enough to both be fathers, but we're relatively young men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For us to be from the environments that we from, we both from the hood. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that we are arguing about paying each other. Right, right. That shows you, bro, that That's we are growing. growing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the fact that, to be honest with you, bro, like, that's how other groups of people do. Like, bro, I told you, bro, that I have slight anxieties now about right. even being in studios, bro. Right, right, right. Bro, we had we had to say, bro, let's, let's go home and yeah, go yeah. to sleep. Oh, we wasn't, we was going until four in the morning. Right. We, it would have never stopped. It right. But that's, that's uh, what I... And when you was telling me the music, you lost love for the music last night when we were working on music and you was playing your beats, I was like, after you told me that, it surprised me today because I'm like, wow, well, I guess I just witnessed history again because your love was there. Yeah. It's back in you. And it was, be- it was because of the environment. It wasn't That's a it. parasitic environment. Right. And I'm going to tell you what, too. I tell people this all the time. I don't know whether I was a very small part. Mm-hmm. Of T.I. having an opportunity to feed his kids Or I was a big part Whether Rubber Band Man was the biggest song he ever did Or the smallest song he ever did When I see Tip's kids The fact that I know we recorded that song in a bathroom Right, right Like, dude, I want to be a part Like, when I see Tommy Nova And I know, well, if y'all end up working together And shooting videos yeah, and yeah, shooting yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was a small or a big part of something coming to life, bro, I know some of the stuff I got up there, I know that it can help you. Absolutely. And if I could just find a way to make it work and it's not uncomfortable. Right, right. Like, I want to be a part of the way that you feed your family. Yeah, absolutely. And like, same, vice versa right. for me, you know. That's what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. we, you know, the love that we have for each other, you can't put a price on that. Mm-hmm. And the music that we make, you can't put a price on that. We just can do it. Mm-hmm. And wherever it goes, it goes. But we're gonna figure it know, out. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. You're gonna give me some music and I'm gonna give you some money. So <laughs> way. But I, I just wanna and I'll say, probably give it back to you through your foundation, yeah. you know. That's just how we roll. But yeah. it's it's all it's all beautiful, man. I, I'll tell you this, man, that uh, I just want you to know that I'm proud of you. Um even though I believe that you're one of the greatest uh artists on this planet. I appreciate that. I marvel more in the man that you are. Thank you. Um even when you talking bad to somebody, <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> it feels awesome. We got to get a gangster sometimes. Yeah, you know? but but, I don't like to go there too much, but yeah, you know. But uh, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm proud of you, man. And somebody was asking me, they was tripping that I knew you and that you don't do more um, with, with my music. And I told somebody it's because I know that he blessing me. I know, I know who you are. No, I'm waiting for you to send me everything <laughs> I know, so but, but, I can just do what I do right, but and I'll the, be on all of it. That's the love that we have for each other yeah, yeah. because I know how it feels to be used. Yeah, yeah. I love people, bro. One of the reasons why I don't carry much cash money around in my pocket is because if there's a homeless man on the corner and I only got $100 bills, but I know that I got it to spend, right. I'll give it away. Well, that's the same thing with me. Yeah, you know, I'll I, give, I, I give everything in my pocket away. That's what I do too. You know, I I, I don't ask no questions. You know, some people could be faking out there. Some mm-hmm. people, but I don't ask no questions. You out here, and I'm able to do it. Yeah. Now, whatever you do with it, that's on you. Yeah, you gonna have to deal. Yeah, with Yeah, you got to deal life. with right. that, right? But th- I see people all the time, and they don't even know who I am. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm able to. So I got a few dollars in my car. I keep just yeah. so I don't use my credit card so much. But I end up running out because before I get to the light, there's the people there, and I just you know, like I say, that comes from my mom. Mm-hmm. I'm more comfortable giving than taking. Like it could be, you know, and I remember you telling me something a long time ago, and I always use that. Mm-hmm. You told me. Good and bad change is uncomfortable for you. Mm-hmm. And I remember that. Wow. You know? I mean, how many times you've heard that? You yeah. know, and I remember that. So 
I think, you know, like I said, it's, it's natural for me to, it's more, somebody can give me a, a sock or something and I'm going to be emotional because I'm that, that's uncomfortable for me. I don't know why. I, it shouldn't be, but I feel more comfortable just giving, if we're going to eat food or giving some people some instruments. I don't want nothing from it, you know. I just know that I can help. I give you, I give you something um, in closing. <clears throat> One of the ways that I got tight with KL was through Fiend. Well, before you say that, I was telling you, I wanted to tell you, check KL out. I've been working with KL since I was about 14 years wow. old. And I went in his house in Baton Rouge. He had all the No Limit stuff. And he, like I say, coming from where I'm at, nobody ain't got no plaques playing a mm-hmm. horn and all that. But I'm like, this is where. I, and so I'm telling you, send me the stuff, right. and I'll do what I do. Because KL probably got 100 beats with me on them right. for Mystical, for I, BG, everything. Yeah, yeah. You do better with taking my money. I right, do better right. with sitting. There we go. Right. So hey, it ain't no thing. Ain't it crazy that he talked about KL? We used your wall as an example when I was telling them the story about KL. Oh, yeah. KL was one of the most inspirational things that ever happened to me because I hadn't seen that either. It, his wall in his house in Baton Rouge, they're this high. Yeah. From the bottom of the floor to the top. Oh, yeah, the ceiling, yeah, yeah. All the way across, all the way up and down are plaques. That was the first time I seen that at 14. I still ain't seen no shit like that. Still to this day, I've been all around the world with some of the biggest artists in the world. Mm-hmm. I've never, because me, I don't even, um, Lil Wayne Platt for the Carter Three and T.I., uh, Urban Legend. Oh, was Urban Legend? No, Trap Music. T.I.'s Trap Music are the only two plaques that really mean anything to me. Oh, yeah. And my staff gets on me all the time because... I'm always thinking of the present and the future. Right. If you stay in the past, like it's always, what are we doing now? Right. And what can we do in the future? But that is history, and we it have to history. do better. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me tell you the story. So, um, I used to come up and do beats for Fiend, and um, I was dead broke. Like I didn't have no money, and uh, my dad always taught me that we men, you you pull your own weight. Yeah. But I didn't have enough gas money to get back to. Uh, Mississippi mm-hmm. and um, Fiend was like bro you know let me give you $200 right. so you can get back bro cause Fiend has always been kind to me he always he, he, shout out to Fiend to yeah he called me and checked on me a and, couple of times um, so so I called my mom and I said hey mom should I take this money from Fiend cause it, you know? right. and my mom said that if somebody was robbing you or your truck outside, somebody ran into it right. while we were doing this interview. You couldn't stop that from happening. Right. You would just have to deal with it. You just got to deal with it. He said, well, God works through his or her people. Mm. So the blessings come, come through humans. Yeah. And as long as you know that people are not manipulating you or trying to position themselves, right. you take them blessings. Yeah, absolutely. So like now when I speak, a girl in Houston, she did this, no lie. She was like, my mom, after I finished speaking, she said, my mom always told me when somebody do a good job, you tip them. Mm. She was like, David Banner, I learned so much in your lecture. Here go $20. See I that? took that $20 and would have got a drink. And I was <laughs> happy as shit. So, 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 take a, so take those blessings, bro, when you know that they're blessings. And yeah, I know yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, spiritual yeah. person. You can feel yeah, when yeah, it's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can take that and bless somebody else. Bro. Oh, I'm going to take it. <laughs> well, I got it for you. But I'm saying, but my whole point was, I know we got to get paid or whatever it is, but I'm letting you know that that's never the case. I already knew that. So if you didn't have nothing from me, we would still be here. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if you got anything from me now, but I'm I'm mm-hmm. not worried about it because the love that we got and the collaborative effort that's happening. And if we keep beautiful. being ourselves, it'll manifest. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm thinking about the bigger picture, yeah. you know? I just always want, I just, uh, this is what I always tell my staff all the time, trombone, is that, hey, have y'all ever noticed how much I thank y'all? Yeah, thank, yeah, by yeah, how many yeah. times have I thanked you since I've been here? About three million. Yeah, the reason but why. But I'm the same way. Though. Yeah, but the reason why I do that is I know that I'm human and one day I'm going to fuck up. Yeah. And I always tell people I'd rather err on the side of caution and kindness. Mm-hmm. And this is what I, I had, I had a run in with a cat recently. He thought that I had, he thought I had messed him over. And I said, dog, we've done business 30, 40 times right. where I pay you right after you do what you do. Right. You can't even give me the benefit of the doubt. 
One time? One time. Even though I didn't fuck over him, bro. Right. I looked at him and said, bro, all that I've done that you can't believe in me one time. I'll tell you a quick, quick story. Um, I was getting sued um, by this company one time. And I actually didn't do nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a sample in the music that I didn't know was there because it was somebody. It was my song, but another person had produced it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, He yeah. was from Australia. Right, right. So because he had live instruments in the song, he had played live instruments over the sample. I assumed it was live. That it was all live. Right, right. right? And um, so the so the judge said something so powerful. He said, "I actually believe you didn't know that there was a sample in it." Right. But he asked the question. He said. But did you breach his copyright? And mm-hmm. what he was saying, where well, did you put the song out? Right. And did it have that man's music on it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I put it on He it. said, so you owe him something. Something. That's right. So then he turned around and he asked the young lawyers who were in the room that, you know, when that was working inside right. of the uh, right. court. He said, who is this David Banner guy? And every one of the, there was four lawyers that were working in, in, in the court. They all said he's a good person. And he does a lot for the community. Mm. Because they thought that I was a good person was the difference between me. I, he actually could have actually hit me for one, over $120,000. Mm. He said, I'm going to make you pay the least amount that this man is old because I truly believe that he's a man of virtue, but literally because they vouched for me, mm-hmm. they literally saved me $100,000, bro. Wow. So what I'm saying is, is like, I would rather err on being kind and being right. good so we can play for the rest of our life. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're building from here on out. Thank you, bro. This is David Banner, David Banner Podcast, a Banner Vision, Third Good Marshall college fun we appreciate you trombone shorty new orleans yeah hey right, dude tommy nova tommy nova <laughs> watch out for tommy nova i heard that music <laughs> and i need my camera lesson time oh, i'm gonna so learn it's a from contract you. Yeah, now. Yeah. but see see i'm gonna learn from you and charlie and then i ain't gonna need you i'm just joking man i'm just <laughs> i'm just messing with you no we gonna we, we can't do everything Thank you for supporting the David Banner Podcast. Hello, hi, this is David Banner, and I'd like to tell you all about Urban Temple Wellness. They invite you to enjoy a healing experience in the heart of Midtown Atlanta. Let the healing hands of the Lotus Queen balance and restore mind, body, and soul in a safe and healthy environment. Custom massage therapy treatments will boost immune health and create a sense of overall well-being. Visit the Urban Temple's website at www.urbantemplewellness.com. That's U-R-B-A-N-T-E-M-P-L-E-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S.com to schedule your next moment of peace and well-being on earth. This is David Banner, and I'd like to tell you all, enjoy. Enjoy.